In this video, I'm going to show you the new web objects in Adobe Captivate 12.5. I'm Paul Wilson, and I make YouTube videos about e-learning, specifically the authoring software Adobe Captivate. If you like what I'm doing here, please like my videos, subscribe to the channel, and by all means, share this video with all of your e-learning buddies. So with the release of 12.5, we're going to get some of the features that we had back in Captivate Classic, back in the new Adobe Captivate. So, one such feature is web objects. Now, first of all, I want to say full disclosure, I'm doing this with a pre-release copy of Adobe Captivate 12.5. This is not the official release, so some things might look and behave a little bit different, but I just wanted to give you, you know, an overview of what the feature is capable of on the day of release. To add a web object to your Adobe Captivate project, you just need to click on the Add Media Blocks icon in your left-hand toolbar, and you'll see Web Object down below here. We're going to select that, and that will add a web object block to your Adobe Captivate project. Let's go through some of the things you'll find in the Properties Inspector, starting with Alignment and Spacing. You, of course, can do all the usual refinements that you would typically see here. Like, for example, you can adjust the width of the content itself. You can adjust the padding. And what I like to do is I like a web object to fill up as much of the slide as possible. So I will click my mouse and drag that content down and then select auto fit height. So it uses the full desktop. There is the possibility of using two web objects on a slide. That's something that's available to you. If your students are required to maybe compare two different websites or two other web object type content items, that's a way you can accomplish that here. But I'm gonna go back to one for right now. There are no design options, or there really is just the one design option, the default design option for web objects. But if we move down to components, you'll see that the basic web object component cannot be turned off. It's on no matter what but you can turn on or off the caption, subtitle, the button, and the card that's available for each web object. And below that, we have appearance, where you could change the background from a solid fill to a linear gradient, a radial gradient, or even an image, if that's something you want. If you've selected card, there will be a section for adjusting the appearance of the card as well. So you can change the corner radius and decide what the card is filled with, whether it's a solid fill, one of the two gradients, or an image background. And of course, you can choose a border and a drop shadow for that card as well. I'm actually gonna turn off everything except just the web object here, so we can just focus on that. I'm going to click the web object here and show you this is where you would add your content itself. So there are three types of content you can add to a web object as a source. The first is a URL. A URL is simply any web address, like www.adobe.com would be an example of a URL. An embed code, which actually can be a snippet of a web page or part of, say, something like a YouTube video things of that nature. Also too, the last option here is system where you can select a file, specifically a PDF document from somewhere on your computer to be included and embedded as part of your e-learning course. Let's start with URL. So if I was teaching someone about the new MV7, perhaps it's a sales training, for example, I just need to copy the URL you would find in a browser right here and we'll just minimize that. I'll select the web object and make sure that all of the text is selected in the URL, and we'll go ahead and we'll paste that in. Press Enter just to make sure it takes it. I find sometimes you have to click on the web object for it to update, and as you can see here now, we've got the website related to this particular microphone here. Let's go ahead and add another blank slide here. And we'll go ahead and add another web object. Like before, I'm just going to turn off all the captions, subtitles, and so forth. I'll resize this a little bit here. 
and we will just set it to auto fit height so that it fills the screen here. Now if I select my web object, again, we get the content portion of the properties inspector here, and we can enter in an embed code. Now I've got a really good example that I used with an actual client. One of the things I discovered is that you can embed a Google map. And if you're teaching someone, you know, where they might get in touch with Sure Microphones, Sure Incorporated, if you go to Google Maps and find their headquarters here, you can click on this share icon on Google Maps and choose embed a map. And you can literally embed this map in your e-learning course. You can set up, of course, small, medium or large maps. I'm going to choose custom size here and I'm going to select 1366 by 768, a nice large map. And then I'm going to copy this HTML. We'll go ahead and minimize the browser here. And I can just simply paste this map embed code and just click the web object to have it sort of take it in. And there it is. My students can now, of course, look at a map. And when we preview this, you'll see why this is really cool. Let's add another blank slide. And I'll go ahead and I'll add another web object to this slide. Like before, I'm just going to turn off all the optional components. And again, just enlarge this so we're using up as much of our screen as possible. And I'll select the web object. And this time, I'll select System. You'll see a folder icon, which allows me to navigate to where I might have a PDF file that I wish to display to my students here. So I will select that and select Open. And using, of course, your default browser, you'll see, of course, a PDF embedded right in the browser here. Again, you'll see how this is really cool. Let's go back to the overall properties inspector here, and I'll show you where you could add a second system PDF file. So let's click on that. We'll go to system here, grab the folder icon, and we'll select the spec sheet for this particular product as well. All right, pretty cool. Let's go back up to slide one and preview this project so you can see what these web objects look like in real life. Okay, let's go ahead and start here. So here we are with a website. Now, this isn't just a snapshot of a website. This is a fully interactive portal into their website. And of course, everything you want, you can, of course, click on. You can navigate to all the various different sites. And what's really cool about this is that it's fully responsive design. So if you're clicking on different things and navigating around, the website will adjust to accommodate the smaller browser viewport there. Let's go back to regular view here and we'll just go to the next slide. Here's our map. Again, fully interactive. I can click on this, I can zoom in, and I can even get directions. This will open in a new tab, but I could type in my home address here and get directions if I wanted to go and visit Sure Incorporated. Let's go back here. And we'll go ahead and move forward. And here's our documentation for this product here. So this is, again, fully interactive. I can scroll through the owner's manual for this particular microphone. I've got the spec sheet over here. If I want to zoom in a little bit closer, I certainly can do that. Do it for both of these documents. And I can even download this if I wish to download that particular file and save it for later. In fact, you can even use this as a way of getting the documentation to your sales force there. If you thought this video was helpful, please like and share it with your colleagues. If you need help with Adobe Captivate, hire Paul for one-on-one -on -one instruction. Paul's goal is to focus on lessons based on your specific needs. Visit his website at CaptivateTeacher.com and don't forget to subscribe to his YouTube channel.